song our pianist was just playing is called Glorious Day. And what a glorious day that will be when we see our Savior, the Lord Jesus. We've seen him by faith, but one day we'll, we will see him by sight. And what a grand and glorious day that will be. We want to welcome you to the ordination service today of Brother Kurt Miller. Uh, we appreciate Brother Kurt, and this is a high day. Uh, we, reg we recognize our graduates this morning in the service, and it's always a high day whenever you recognize graduates, and an even greater day when you are ordaining men into the gospel ministry. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How shall they hear without a preacher? And that gives me hope. That gives me hope for our nation. That gives me hope for our society. God's still calling men to preach his word. I'm glad God's not giving up on society. But I'm glad God's just doubling down. And I'm glad the gospel works. But we want to welcome you today on behalf of Kurt's family, on behalf of Millerville Baptist Church, and uh, I will say that uh, uh, those of you that have a part in the service today, if you would just follow the bulletin, and whenever it's your time, you go ahead and approach and uh, do what uh, Brother Kurt has requested. But I want to take just a moment and want to say that the flowers on the communion table are in loving memory of Miss Linda Miller, Ronnie's wife and Kurt and Chad's uh, mother, but uh, even though she can't be here today, we want to honor you as a family, and I know that's a hard place for you. We pray for you. We're going to continue to pray for you, and Brother Ronnie, Kurt, Chad, I, I don't know how much they know in heaven, but they know whenever sinners repent, there's joy in the presence of angels, and I can't help but believe that uh, Maybe the Lord's going to let Miss Linda look in today. Watch your boy ordained in the gospel ministry. Amen. So, Brother Hal, if you would, sir. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we... Thank you so much today that we're able to gather here. And as the preacher said, uh, we're so thankful you're still calling men into the ministry. Lord, it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of this service. Lord, for Brother Kurt, we appreciate him and love him. And Lord, I'm glad he's one that you've called. He's not Papa called and Mama sent, but... He's one of yours. And as the preacher's done alluded to the scripture about how shall they believe on him who they've not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher. Before that, Lord, you said that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'm glad that you sent preachers, Lord, to declare your word. And as the scripture said, how beautiful are the feet of them that Preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Oh, Lord, you're good to us, and I just want to give you praise, honor, and glory today for all that you've done, all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. Lord, I appreciate Lenny's Grove Baptist Church, and I pray, God, your blessings on them. Lord, you'd bless Kurt as their pastor. Lord, they'll fall in behind him. God, follow his leadership. Lord, do all they can for the furtherance of the gospel, and may we as Millersville here as well, Lord, do that that you've called us to do, Lord, to spread the gospel throughout the world, throughout even here in our own little uh, neighborhood. God, help us, Lord. God, to take a stand and be counted on the Lord's side. Let people realize and see that there is a reality in serving a true and living God. I thank you that you are a true and living God, one we can worship one we can trust, one we can lean on, 
no matter what comes our way. Thank you, Lord, today for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for that and you saved here this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you're still in the saving business. Lord, may you get glory and honor through this service today for your name's sake. Thank you that it is a high day, Lord, in, in our area at this time. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brother Hal, for the prayer. At this time, we want to uh, ask all the ordained men of God, all ordained men, if you would, to occupy these two front pews over here. If you would, please. church has placed Brother Kurt into the hands of the Presbytery for questioning as well as the purpose of ordination. And upon the completion of the service today, Brother Kurt will be out of the hands of the Presbytery, back into the hands of Middlefield Baptist Church. But this time, uh, we're going to ask our ladies uh, to sing. me in your pleasing blood. Now all I know, your forgiveness and he prays. Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne. Crown you now with many 
I have been asked to read some scripture here this afternoon, and I was asked to read scripture. One scripture come to my mind, and it has been pressed on my heart. It's found over in Luke chapter 10, verse 38. It says, Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about, much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. She was worried. Martha was worried and cumbered about with all the things that were happening that day. And Brother Kurt, there will be many different times in which you feel that burden on ministry, but there's those at Lenny's Grove, those brothers and sisters in Christ that you're called to fall in together, work together, alongside together. Don't feel like you have to do it all because they are there to help. But listen to what Jesus said. He said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Brother, don't let your work dictate your worship. Fall at the feet of Jesus. Find nourishment for your own soul. And let your worship dictate your work. Brother, as I said, there will be times where it feels like it's overwhelming to work that you're called to. Make sure that you do not negate that time that you have with the Lord, that personal time in which you're in the Word, calling unto Him, seeking Him out to nourish your own soul. Brother, I love you, praying for you, and I'm excited about what God is going to do through your ministry and through our brothers and sisters in Christ at Lenny's Grove. say I was honored when Kurt asked me to pray and that's praying out this time. Heavenly Father, we gather here today ordain a man that I have known for a short while and learned to love him as a brother and it's no doubt Lord that he has been chosen to deliver your word Lord and thank you for him being able to come to Lenny's Grove Lord to be our pastor. We ask you to bless him Lord. Bless him and his family and if Megan because we know there'll be hard times and there'll be good times. But through you, all things are possible, Heavenly Lord. But we ask you to guide, put your hand upon him and protect him. Ask for their, your wisdom. Give it to him, give it to the church, Lord, to be able to follow his word as he delivers your word to us. Lord, in these things we ask in your name. Amen. Well, I must say, this is a bitter, sweet day for me. I told our church family, I said, you better enjoy it when these young preachers are here. Uh, they, add, uh, they add something special to the services. And uh, Brother Kurt, Megan, I love you. You too, Braden. We love that little and it's on the way. But we sure missed you. And I knew these days were going to come, but I wish they were further out in the future. But I noticed real quick at the revival at uh, Lenny's Grove, I seen you fit. 
You found your place, God's place for you. But I appreciate and love you. And I want you to know that we're here when you begin to pastor. We're here for you. For the entire family. We're going to pray for you. That's our solemn duty. Is that's our privilege. We, we've got you back. And uh, anytime them folks at Lenny's Grove, they get tired of you, you just come on back over here. <laughs> uh, we know that ain't going to happen. We appreciate those good folks from Lenny's Grove. Uh, one of you deacons is a little questionable, Brother Dennis, but <laughs> we'll, you know, we'll get him straightened out. But uh, my, it's an honor to stand here, an honor to ordain a man, God's man. There's a lot of men in our pulpits that need to get out of them, compromisers. We live in a day of compromise. But thank God for men that'll stand and preach to people, not at people. And preach the word of God. That's all we have. It's all we need. It's God's word, God's spirit, God's power. And I'm grateful that God's given us what we need. But you just simply be who you are, brother. Be who you are. Your family be who they are. But I want to preach this afternoon out of 1 Peter chapter number 5. God laid this message on my heart several, several weeks back. First Peter chapter number five, I want to read verses one through four. And we've been sitting just a little bit, but I'm going to do something a little different. I want you to stand, if you would, this afternoon in the reading of God's word. Rest yourself just a moment. The Bible said in First Peter five, beginning in verse number one, says, the elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, Neither is being lords over God's heritage, but being an example or example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. You may be seated. Father, we thank you for the reading of the word of God. We thank you for... The songs that have been said, we thank, sang, we thank you for the prayers that have been offered unto you. Lord, you know that there's no way we can stand in our own strength, our own ability. But Lord, we look to you today. I pray that you'd illuminate our minds. And I pray, God, you'd help us and supply that that they need. You encourage my brother, encourage his wife, his family. And we'll thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Kurt, I want to preach today on the thought of shepherding the flock. Shepherding the flock. Philip Keller wrote a classic, A Shepherd's Look at Psalm 23. Keller said it's no accident that God chose to call us sheep. The behavior of sheep and humans are very similar. Sheep don't care, don't take care of themselves and they don't require uh, and they require more care than any other livestock. Endless attention, meticulous care. They are defenseless and easily stray. They easily become disoriented and cannot find their way back to the fold. Boy, that doesn't that sound like us? They are prone to wander. They're prone to eat poisonous, poisonous plants their wool picks up dirt, wind-blown debris, grass and brambles, and they're prone to lie down in low places. They get rolled over on their backs, and if they don't get turned over in time, they face possible death. 
Shepherding, to say the least, is challenging, but the same, it's the most rewarding work that a pastor does. Peter was writing to pastors during some very challenging and demanding days for the church. I'd say that would be an understatement in the day that you and I live in. These are definitely demanding days. Peter was seeking to encourage and guide God's shepherds during these demanding days. These are challenging days, unlike what unlike we have never ever experienced before. But we find that God's, de- God's guidelines for, sh- for elders has never, ever wavered. God never changes His standards in His Word. In verse number 1, we want to see, first of all, the distinction of elders. The distinction of elders. He says, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory of that shall be revealed. The term elder comes. It has a Jewish background uh, since the days of Moses and the heavy load of leadership uh, that he carried. Seventy elders were chosen, set apart, and granted a share of the Spirit. A title of honor in both Jewish and Roman Greco world. There's three New Testament terms and used interchangeably to refer to these gifted and appointed leaders in the church. Elder, 1 Timothy 5 and 19. It speaks of the emphasis on spiritual maturity. Secondly, the word bishop, 1 Peter 3 and 2. It expresses the responsibility of guardianship. And third and finally, the word pastor in Ephesians 4 and 11. It speaks of the priority of feeding and teaching God's word. It was Paul's custom, Brother Kurt, to ordain elders in every church plant. We find in Acts 30, verse, or verse, uh, chapter 11, verse number 30, And when they had ordained elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they had believed. An elder, no small honor, enters into the oldest religious office that dates back where he draws, he ordains a shepherd of the flock, a defender of the faith. Peter is exhorting, Brother Kurt. Peter, this old man of God, is exhorting the elders. Down through the years of time, I tell you, God knew this day would come. He knew these days of the mission of the church and the lining up and the ordaining and fixing elders within the church family to carry out the work of God and shepherding of the flock. What a high and holy calling, Brother Kurt. I tell you, you'd have to step down to be the president of the United States, and I mean that with all of my heart. He said in verse number one, he said, I exhort. I exhort as an elder. Here is an elder, old Peter. I tell you, that, that disciple who, who had, was so rash so many times, the Lord had called Brother Peter to be an elder. And Peter used those false, false, false falterings and those failures. Uh, I tell you, that's how you learn uh, in life. It's not by so much by success, but by the failings and the falterings that we go through. That word exhort, it means to call along the side of. It means to encourage or to compel someone in a certain direction. God is using Peter. Oh, that, that Peter that was so reckless and so rash is now a mature man of God and God is using Peter to encourage these young men of God. What an encouragement it is when God, when a, when a man of God who is seasoned in the ministry comes alongside these young men of God that he's called and God's getting them ready to, for ministry and God puts them in his place of service. And what an encouragement it is to that young man of God, to those, young, those older preachers who walk some places that they've yet to walk and they come alongside them and they encourage them. What a great, great 
a blessing that is, encourages them in the ministry. There's going to be some discouraging days, Brother Kerr, but I'll say, Brother, there's some high days. There's some high days that'll outweigh those, uh, those days that are low days. Uh, matter of fact, there'll be a balance. Uh, there'll be a good balance, and God will mix up that. You know, the uh, Paul, when he was shipwrecked, and he was on the island of, of Melita. That word, uh, Melita, means sweetness. Sometimes when it seems like that everything's going wrong, everything is going bad, God will put you on a Melita. That word Melita means sweetness, and God will throw in some sweetness in those places, those sour places in life, and God will bring a balance into your experience with Him. We find that Peter knew the elders were under enormous pressure. I tell you, men of God are under enormous pressure in the day that you and I live in. We see that those men in Peter's day were, there was apostasy. Defection of the faith had entered the church. Wouldn't you say that's where we are now? Defection, apostasy has entered the church of the living God. People are not just falling away and quitting church, but people are falling away in the pews. A man of God can stand and preach and preach his heart out, and it's just like water off a duck's back. But I'm glad that God has an elect few. I'm glad that God has a remnant that still hears and listens and obeys the word of the living God. We see saying today the tide of persecution was rising and they would be targeted. Brother Kurt, we're going to reach a day where the tide of persecution is rising against the church of the living God. Who would ever thought that in America that persecution of Christians uh, uh, would be on the uptick? Uh, we see it on, on every turn. Uh, matter of fact, the, uh, the uh, Supreme Court that's getting ready to overturn uh, the murder of innocent life, 63 million and counting, uh, has been hatefully uh, directed and, and pointed at. It's all because of those bunch of right-wing uh, people, those bunch of right-wing Christians. That's the reason all this stuff uh, is going to be overturned, I'll tell you. And that is simply a... Uh, that is simply an indictment against God himself. I tell you, God's all about life, especially in the womb of a mother. We see here number three today that God's people were suffering hardship. And these shepherds, they carry, these elders carry the flock, the people of God upon their hearts. Brother Kurt, that, that's where that's, that's, God has placed that people of Lenny's Grove on your heart. That, that's where you carry them. And someone that's not called is so hard to understand. Uh, when you go on vacation, they go with you. When you come home at night, they're there with you. And what I want to challenge you, brother, is when you're at home, uh, try to be home. Be home. When you're there, be there. And Megan, I want to say this at this point in the message. I want you to keep a balance, keep our brother in balance. Amen. I want uh, Brother Kurt. I, I'm going to give her permission today. She's not my wife. I'm going to give her per, uh, permission today that when she sees you get out of balance, that she pulls on your coattail and she says, my dear husband, I want you to pull back a little bit. You're getting out of balance. You see, a man of God that's, that is wrapped up in ministry. You know, a, a, a pastor's wife is almost like, like dating a man, living with a man that is in an affair in a love affair. Whenever God puts a church in a man of God's heart, that church is there. He loves that people. And it's so easy to get caught up. It's so easy to get blind to the life. And, and you can leave home undone, brother. You can leave home undone. The greatest responsibility that you have as a man of God is to still to be faithful to your wife, your family. That is your first and foremost ministry. Never, ever. Now, I know there's times, things in the church that they have to come first and understand that. But, friend, you, you've got to take care of that home. Your, your ministry won't mean a thing if you lose your home, brother. So I challenge you to do that very thing. We see the distinction of elders, but in verses 1 through 3, we see the directives for elders. We find here that Peter says, Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, 
neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Now, Peter is giving these elders, you and I, their God-given responsibilities. There among this letter that we see here, we see that the elders are to have an attitude of understanding. Notice verse 2, it says, The flock of God among you. Now think about that just for a second. The elder is not above the flock. He's not to be untouchable. Notice that word among, it means in the presence of a period of time. Brother Kurt, never ever be a man of God that cannot be touched by your people. Now think about that. I've seen some preachers and they have placed themselves, and I'm not down on preachers today. I'm just going to tell you this the way it is. There's some preachers that are on a pedestal and you can't get close to them. You can't get around them. It just seems like they are just in a, in a place all by themselves. But notice it says in the presence of. Always be touchable. Now there's always, brother, there's a distinction. There needs to be a distinction between God's man and the flock of God. But be touchable. Jesus was accessible. Jesus was touched by those that he pastored and those that he ministered to. We find that an elder must spend time among the flock to know them, to understand them, their struggles, their battles. How in the world can you preach to a people, Brother Kurt, if you don't know anything about them? You don't know their struggles. You don't know the battles that they face. Hired Hendricks, a great man of God, said, if you can't stand the smell of sheep, you shouldn't be a shepherd. A shepherd smells like sheep, brother. A shepherd, a real shepherd, gets in there among the flock and he ministers and he prays and he bears the burdens and he gets right in there with them. I tell you, when they under a load, brother, get up on that load with them. When they're hurting, you hurt with them. When they cry, you cry. When they laugh, you laugh. When they're sad and they mourn, you mourn with them. I tell you, when they shout, brother, you shout with them. When they sing, you sing with them. If you don't like the smell of sheep, brother, you don't need to be a shepherd. Don't need to be a shepherd. I tell you what, it's, it's a challenging thing to spend time in a growing fellowship. We see that the elder is to spend time with the chief shepherd, the Savior. Brother Kurt, your ministry to those good people at Lenny's Grove is an overflow of your relationship and your walk with Christ. And that's similar to what Brother Brian was speaking to us about in the scripture he read. And I've always found that whenever God tells us one time, that's real important, isn't it? It's always important when God tells us something one time. Whenever God tells us something twice, then we really need to pay attention. We really need to pay attention. Never ever let anything come between that time that you spend alone with God. Now, Brother Kurt, I, I know I've been a pastor for over 26 years, and I know uh, what it is to come in. Brother Ronnie, your dad can tell you these other men of God, if you're not careful, you pick up the Word of God, and what are you doing? You're looking for a message. You're looking for something to preach to somebody, to help somebody else. And many times we're not careful. Our soul becomes barren and dry. But you let the Lord fill you up, brother. You let the Lord feed you. Let, you let the Lord teach you and instruct you. You, you feed at his table. And when you feed at his table, then you, you, you've got some bread, brother. You've got something to take to the flock. I tell you, our churches need men of God that will bring some help. Boy, we live in challenging days and our people need to hear from God. They, they don't need a, just a three-point sermon and a poem and a little catchy phrase to go along with. They, they need a man of God that spent some time with God in His presence. These old men of God that the Lord allowed me to be around when I was uh, coming up and I, old Devon Dyson and some of these men and old Devon talked about how he laid out before God on a Saturday night and prayed and sought the Lord's face and my how God used him and God's using you now, brother. 
God's using you now and he's going to use you in the future. And I'll tell you what, I look for big things from God. I look for Lenny's Grove to do great things, I tell you in God. Notice he says here in our text, Peter says, uh, Peter tells us, he said, listen, fellowship. What is fellowship? Brother Kurtz, you've already found out, brother, when you walk in that study. There's not a message that's all alliterated and typed out. Doesn't have them perfect illustrations. God said, just come on in, son. Right here it is. Pick it up. But there's a price to pay. There's a price to pay to, to get that. And you can have it. Greatest thing you can do, Brother Kurt, is to beg God for the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask God to fill you every day. That, 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 that needs to be the heart cry of Kurt Miller. God, fill me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. God, help me to preach in your power and your authority. Brother, we got to have that. Got to have it. He tells us here, he says, feed the flock of God among you literally means that's in your charge. Kurt, what a responsibility. God has placed his church under you, in your charge. You're accountable to God for them. It's God's flock. No pressure, right? I, I, I'm going to say something. I, I, I don't like to, and I know why preachers do it, but I don't like to hear preachers say, my church. I never say that. God helping me. I never say, my church over there at Millersville. It's not my church. It's not any of these men of God church. And I know that God has given them some ownership in that. But when, a, when it all comes down to it, it's God's church. That, it's the church that Jesus died for. That's his bride. That's the daughter-in-law of God. That is the redeemed of God. They belong to him. Boy, that helps you keep things in, in perspective. No pressure though, brother. No pressure. No pressure at all. That word feed, it literally means to shepherd. It means to tend. It speaks of all the duties of a shepherd. Feeding, tending, guarding, leading, guiding, to nourish with a proper diet. I would encourage you, you preach what God wants you to preach, but if God will let you preach through books, do expository preaching. That way, brother, you'll preach on subjects that a lot of preachers dodge. That wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. But you preach the whole counsel of God without fear and without favor. And God will bless you for that. That word feed, which speaks of guarding and leading and guiding and nourishing, it speaks also to heal from Bramble hurt. It means to strengthen for possible assault. Brother Kurt, as you are preaching to people, brother, don't preach at them, but preach to them. You got folks that's going to be coming in on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday. And they're going to be hurt, brother. I tell you, they've been in the broad patch of sin. They've been scratched up and beat up by this world. And this pulpit is never to be a whipping post. This is a place of healing. Now, brother, when God calls, calls you out to preach, you preach it straight. But you can preach it in a way, even them hard messages, you can preach in a way that folks still know you love them and you care for them. Amen. We find this feeding, it means to strengthen for possible assault. My, how that when you preach, you see families, you see the assault of the enemy, and you send out a warning. You send out that warning. We see here that the shepherds got many tasks to perform in caring for the flock. There's wolves. Brother Kurt, there's wolves outside and there's wolves 
inside, and that's the one you got to worry about. These wolves that you'll encounter. And I'll tell you what, our prayer is that God will give you a good sheepdog. You deacons need to be some good sheepdogs for your pastor. You see them wolves get after your pastor. You see them wolves begin to nip at your pastor. Tell you what, you take care of them wolves. You just surround the man of God and take care of him, and that's all I'll say about that. The responsibilities for feeding the flock, it says, in, uh, first of all, a workman. Brother Kurt, you can't be a shepherd and be a lazy man. Ephesians 4 and 12 says the work of the ministry, that's where we get the word, our word energy. It speaks to toil. It speaks to labor. It speaks of effort. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the work of truth. Ecclesiastes 12 and 12 says, Much study is a weariness of the flesh. Brother Kurt, one of the most difficult things that you're going to face is them days when you don't want to go in that study. And it's pretty outside. Everybody else is out doing this and doing that. And boy, you, your family, there's your family. But you know, you, you, you've got to study. You need to study. You've got to get in the book. Got to push through those times. Got to push those times and the Lord will help you. He'll help you. First Timothy 4 and 13 says, Give attendance to reading, exhortation, to doctrine, Meditate upon these things and give yourself wholly to them. He says, secondly, in verse number two, he says, taking the oversight. That word oversight, it speaks of active inspection. Inspection. Watch your flock. Watch them. Get to know them. You'll see any change in behavior. It's amazing the discernment insight God will give you to see things in those that you pastor and minister to. God has made you a watchman, Brother Kurt. It means to lean forward. It means to peer into the distance to observe. In ancient history, the watchman stood on the walls of a city to warn the approaching of enemies, the danger in the city of fires and civil disturbance and to sound the alarm. Brother Kurt, there's going to be times you're just going to have to sound the alarm, Brother. Sound the alarm. That's part of your duty. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they must give an account. Brother Curtis, God's man, God's pastor, you'll see the enemy. You'll see the, the dangers that's there for God's flock, those hidden serpents that are laying the poisonous plants in the field, the tendency of sheep to wander, sheep becoming cast, rolled over. Sound the alarm, brother. Sound the alarm and spare not, for you see the damage, you see the danger that comes. First Samuel 12 and 23, one of the greatest things you can do, brother Kurt, is pray for your people. I mean, pray for them. Pray for them. Bring them to God, brother. Bring them to God. 1 Samuel 12, 23 says, Moreover, as for me, God forbid, I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. A shepherd guides the flock. Sheep are not independent travelers. They're not cows that you sent out in the morning, brother, and they come back that afternoon. They just don't do it. Psalm 23, 2 says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. The greatest Example of pastoring, brother, is our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at our Lord's ministry and how he pastored, how he led. The Bible said, He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, grass is in seasons. Grass comes in seasons. You've got to know where to take your people in order to get the right nourishment that they needed. Those places were located in valleys and different parts and sections. You've got to learn where those places are, brother. And God will show you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. 
A shepherd is a physician's assistant. What do you mean, preacher? Sheep gets diseases. They get sick. They get snake bit. There's pest. Always sick and ailing sheep. There's always somebody that's got problems, brother. Always. There's somebody that's got problems. A shepherd needs to know the symptoms. Mental, moral, spiritual sickness, fevers, cold, paralysis, stiff necks, hard hearts. Your medicine cabinet needs to be filled with divine prescriptions. Divine prescriptions. We find that shepherding involves rescue work. Brother Kurt, nobody knows care or cares how much you know until you show them how much you care. Shepherding involves rescue work, but shepherds are not over God's heritage. We've already covered that, hadn't we? Just remember whose they are. And I want to close with this. We, we talked about the distinction of elders, the directive of elders. But look at the divine recognition of elders in verse number 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, and he will, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. What a word of encouragement for an elder. What a word of encouragement. We see the return of the chief shepherd. <laughs> it's not an if, brother. It's a sure thing. Our Lord is coming. Our Lord is coming. We find that he is the good shepherd that gives his life for the sheep. And he will appear and return to this earth in great power and great glory. Amen. We have a promised return. Notice he said when the chief shepherd shall appear. Thank God he's coming. What a hope we have. What a hope that we give. What a privilege it is to give that. But we see there's a promised return, but there is a personal reward. There's a crown of glory, brother. The Lord's got a reward for God's men. You know, we don't preach. It's good for folks to come by and say, you know, I appreciate the word today. Appreciate that message helped me. But brother, we don't preach for that. If a man preaches for that, he'll quit. He'll quit. What he preaches for is to please the one that's called him. There's coming a day we preach for that well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. This crown of glory it refers to a flower, the amaranth. This flower, it doesn't fade or lose its beauty. Even when it's picked, it revives quickly in the word of in, the, in water. It's symbolic for immort, immortality. In Peter's day, the Stephanus crowd of olive oak and ivy were given to victorious soldiers and athletes. This crown withered quickly. But I'm glad, thank God, that the reward that the Lord gives, brother, it'll never fade, it'll never wither. Hallelujah. That glorious day, brother, when the Lord says, well done. I can't imagine when he rewards God's men for being faithful. Being faithful shepherds, preaching the word of God. Loving God's people. I tell you, that's what it's all about. Brother Kurtz, you be a shepherd. I tell you, it's one thing, there's a lot of men that are preachers. Some men are not real preachers, but they're pastors. And Brother Ronnie knows, and Chad knows what I'm talking about. And I'm telling you, Lenny's Grove, you've got a man that's not just a preacher, but he's a pastor. Not just a preacher, but he's a pastor. God's man. You be God's man, Brother Kurt. You be the man that God wants you to be. First of all, to your family. And then to this precious flock of God. Amen. I love you, my brother.
I was trying to think about what to say, but uh, I want to thank God for my brother. Thank God for his family. Thank God for the home that we have uh, growing up and uh, how it's conducive uh, to what we're in the middle of now. And I just want to give God all the glory. Thank you for all he's done. And thank you for salvation. Thank you for making a way for old sinners to be saved. I'm glad there's still room at the cross. I'm glad uh, that God's still sending out men. I just want to offer a prayer for my brother. I appreciate uh, him. appreciate his family. appreciate uh, little Braden. What a blessing he is. I know he's meaner than a snake, but what a blessing that he is. And uh, yeah, I've talked to uh, the church several times about uh, what all uh, happened with him and just like we are as Christians. There's three ways you can get into a family. You can be born in, you can be married in, or you can be adopted in. I got in all three ways for the family of God. Amen. Amen. And I ain't getting out. Amen. Amen. So I'm like, you don't look like you don't believe that. I got in all three ways. Amen. I was born in the family of God. I'm going to be married in the family of God one of these days. And I was adopted. Hallelujah. Brother, you come on. We'll do a prayer. Brother, you come around. come to you today, Lord, we thank you, dear God, for this opportunity. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you, dear God, for my brother. Thank you for his life. Thank you for his family. I pray that you touch them and help them, dear God. I pray, God, the days that lie ahead, God, I know they may be, many that will be wonderful, God, but many will be tough. I pray that you'd help them, God, in the dark hours. I pray that you'd help them in his time alone of study, God. I pray that you'd uh, uh, bless little Brayton, God, to see uh, uh, that you'd help him, God, to see, uh, may not understand a lot of times why daddy has to be alone. I pray that you bless him, pray for Megan, pray that you'd help her, God, you just touch her in a special way, God, as uh, she's entered in, God, with him. I pray that you'd uh, help her and touch her, dear God. I pray for Kurt, God, that you just touch him in a special way. God, help us to never back up. Help us to never back down, God. No doubt the devil's going to fight, and he will fight, and he does fight, God. But greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. I pray that you'd uh, endure him with power, God, just to uh, give him liberty and power to preach and bring forth the word of God. I pray that you'd touch uh, him, and I pray for the church, dear God, that you'd be with them. Dear God, help them, God, to fall in behind God as he tries to lead and uh, shepherd them as Brother Bill's uh, preached. I pray that you'd touch him, God, and help the people. God, pray that you'd help him to be a blessing unto them. Thank you for these, God, that have uh, laid hands upon them. I thank you, dear God, for a clear path that many of them have left for us. I pray that you'd help us uh, to continue in that way, God, in a day of compromise, in a day of falling away. God, I pray that you'd help us evermore to draw closer and uh, draw nigh unto thee. And I pray that you'd give us special power, God, for these uh, last days. God, touch us in a special way. And I pray that you'd be with us now, God, through the remainder of this service. And touch us, each and every one. Thank you for it, in Jesus' name. Yes, God, I pray that you'd help us. I pray that you'd love on us. Pray for these, God, that you'd bless them. In a special way. Yes, God. Amen. I was honored when I found out I get I was able to uh, take a part in presenting the Word of God to Brother Kurt. 
uh, we've stood many a Sundays in Sunday school and uh, give out the word of God. And I appreciate you. I love you. Sure do miss you. Yes, Lord. Yes. Sing the Lord answer prayer to Brady. Amen. 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 Answer prayer. Amen. And we're going to see soon in Mankind. Amen. You know you ain't got to prop it up. Amen. The Lord said to be an honor. Amen. Amen. Just stick with it. Amen. Love you. Uh, when uh, Kurt and Megan first come, I'm going to be on a little lighter note from Zach. Uh, I believe they sat near us and we was introducing ourselves together and our uh, hearts just joined my family and their family just joined each other and just it was just a blessing. So uh, we're uh, we're big Carolina Tar Heel fans and so I said, I said Kurt, we're, we're having to get together at the house. Uh, you and Megan want to come and and uh, sure, sure, yeah, we'll, we'll come. And I appreciated that. And, and of course, they come and watch the game and uh, didn't realize that Megan was a Duke fan. And <laughs> <laughs> it was the night, I believe, that Duke and Carolina might have been playing. And Carolina got beat real bad. And Megan was uh, rejoicing. But I said all that to say this. Uh, they, they've been to our house many a times. And they are a great blessing. I appreciate them so much. I appreciate their family. Appreciate what they mean to me and my family, and I just love them dearly. I appreciate the Lord being able to use them for His honor and glory. Just love them, and appreciate them, love you guys. Just present the Word of God to you. Verse of Scripture comes to mind. Uh, it says, "All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable." for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And then it says after that that the man of God, Kurt Miller, may be perfect uh, in all good works. That's what this book will do. He knows that. Love him, brother. At this time, we're going to ask the choir to come around and sing, if you would, please. Make your way into the choir loft. At the conclusion of the song, you're welcome to go back down.
piece of the loaf. It won't be able to settle long ago with biblical circumstances. And my wife, she ain't with me, but she's with me. And uh, I know she'd be well pleased to be here today. But uh, I'm glad there's a better day. I'm glad there's a reunion day one day. And we'll gather together again one day. But I appreciate the goodness of the Lord. Have your Bibles this evening. Turn to Hebrew chapter 13. Hebrew chapter 13. I'm going to read you about three verses of Scripture today. So appreciate the good singing. Appreciate the Word of God, Brother Bill. Appreciate all that the Lord's done. Hebrews 13, verse 7. The Bible says, Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of the conversation. Verse uh, 17. He said, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give an account, that they may do it with joy, not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. In verse 24, the Bible says, Salute all them that have the rule over you, and all the saints. They of Italy salute you. Grace be to you all. Amen. The uh, duty for me this evening is to preach the charge to the church. And Lord, if there's ever been a time that we need to have a relationship with the pastor and with the church, it's definitely in the day that we live. Brother Bill's talking about the flock and feeding the flock and taking care of the flock. But there's a responsibility upon the flock also. And I was reading uh, some commentaries and I come across this. A man was talking about the pastor being over a pastor and over a church. And, and he said that he can't please everybody. And so you need to realize that when you go, but he can't please everybody. And, but everybody would like for him to please everybody, but it just ain't going to happen. And I began to think of what he wrote down here, and I wrote it down. And they said if he's young, he lacks experience. If he has a gray hair, he's bald, he's too old for the young people. If he has five or six kids, he has too many. If he has no kids, he's setting a bad example. If he preaches from notes, it's canned message and too dry. If he doesn't have notes, he's not studied and too deep. If he condemns sin, he's cranky and fanatical. And if he doesn't preach on sin, he's a compromiser. If he fails to please everybody, he's hurting the church. And if he tries to please everybody, he's a fool. If he preaches about money, he's a money grabber. If he doesn't preach on tithing, he's not developing the people. If he drives an old car, he's ashamed of the congregation. And if he drives a new car, his affections are on earthly things. If he preaches the truth, he's offensive. If not, he's a hypocrite. And if he preaches the air, he's windy. And if he preaches less, he's just lazy. And so we see that we need to pray for the preacher. Amen. And pray for his family that the Lord will help him along the way. And so we see here the writer of the Hebrews in the book, he was uh, talking about caring for the church, or care, uh, caring for the pastor of the church, and having a good relationship. And if there's ever been time we need to have a good relationship with the church, it surely is in the day and hour that we live. And, and uh, the Bible says in verse 7 that we need to remember them that have rule over you. And when you get a thinking about that remember there, it means to think of or it means to keep in mind. And we're to keep in mind those that have rule over us or who has authority over us. And the, and the, and the scripture here is talking about the pastor. And uh, in growing up, when uh, we was uh, thought about when we was uh, in church and mom and dad took us to church, at, that uh, we honored the pastor. You never heard uh, anybody say anything bad about the pastor. They had respect for him. Uh, uh, they didn't bash the pastor and they didn't tie the pastor down. Uh, and, I, and may I say to you, parents that do that uh, usually wind up raising a bunch of rebels. Amen. I mean, you want to tie the preacher down, have fried preacher for 
uh, after the service, you're going to wind up raising a bunch of rebels. Because the kids, if the children don't have any confidence uh, in the pastor, why are they going to go to them in the hard times and the troubled times of their life? And so you need to have that right relationship with the pastor and, and, and hold him up and respect him. We're living day and time when they're not respected very much uh, in the day that we live. We're put down, they're talked about, they're criticized and uh, in the day that we live. But we need to respect the pastor and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and those that have rule over us, what he's talking about there. And uh, when the kids have trouble, they'll go to him and uh, when they have problems. And, and rebellions, a lot of time, it's rooted in, uh, in, in the kids because of the parents. And, and uh, parents get mad when the preacher, he gets to preaching on the Bible, get to preaching the Word of God. And a lot of, a lot of parents, they'll get mad at the preacher when he gets a, I call it so-called getting in your corner. Amen. And, and uh, people get huffed up and they get mad, especially uh, uh, when the children sitting there and, and they know what mom and daddy's doing at home. Amen. And they know, they know what goes on. They know what goes on uh, uh, down there in the shed, you know, in the refrigerator and all that. Uh, they know all about it. And then when the preacher gets the preaching on, uh, uh, on your sin, you get mad about it. Amen. You get all swelled up and begin to talk about the preacher and put the, put the preacher down. And I tell you what, uh, uh, need to have that right relationship. So don't get mad at him uh, uh, when he's trying to preach to you and trying to help you uh, along the way. But a lot of people do. They get they get mad, especially in the day and hour. There's a lot of sin going on, a lot of sin in uh, people's life. And they're wanting a lot of compromise uh, uh, wanting to get along with everybody and everything's all right. Uh, Seems like we're living day when there ain't no sin. They are sin. They may have uh, this homosexual crowd and uh, shacking up and all that, and he gets on that, and, and there's somebody in your family that's a homosexual, or, or you got somebody in your family shacked up, and your children uh, get to look at you because you've been condoning it, and you're going to, along with it, and then the preacher gets to preaching on it, uh, and you get mad about it, and uh, talking about your drinking. Maybe uh, you'd, be more, you'd be surprised the drinking going on a lot of Baptist churches. They may have. Uh, down there in the woodshed, they got that little cooler, amen. They uh, got them some beer, got them some wine. You know, they always sleep a little bit better, amen. It helps them, helps them. Some of you looking a little funny at me, amen. It helps them, amen. But I'm telling you, am I not right, amen. Uh, a lot of things goes on in Baptist church, but when the preacher uh, gets to preaching on it and, and the children know that you're involved in it, uh, uh, they get to looking at you. And then when they get to looking at you, uh, uh, you get mad and you want to pull root, pull up uh, uh, and head to somewhere else, amen. But you, have, uh, you need to have that right relationship uh, uh, with the pastor. But them roots of rebellion, uh, uh, it'll affect your children, amen. Uh, uh, children get to wonder why mom and dad's are doing this. Why, uh, why are they watching this? When the preacher uh, uh, said they ought not to be uh, for watching that, uh, and the preacher's trying to help you. He's trying to build a, a relationship between you and him. Amen. Uh, he cares for you. He's looking out uh, uh, for the souls of your children. He, he's looking out for your family. He's looking out for your marriage. Uh, uh, and, and he's trying to help you along the way. Uh, and so when he gets to preaching on things, uh, now a lot of people don't uh, say, now don't get to preaching on them things. Amen. Uh, ain't nothing wrong preaching on them things. Amen. Uh, I tell you what, if it's sin, it needs to be dealt with uh, uh, in love and compassion. Amen. Brother Bill talked about uh, uh, not sidestepping sin. We're living in a day and time uh, uh, when there's a lot of pulpits are sidestepping uh, uh, the sin. Amen. Uh, when he starts preaching on how you live, how you how do you act? How you raise your children? Uh, I had, there's a dress code in the Bible. Amen. Uh, I tell you what, that's right. But we're living in a time uh, uh, when a lot of people want to sidestep that. Uh, hey, but when a man of God gets preaching, don't get, don't get mad at him. Amen. Don't, uh, don't swell up at him, but uh, back him and, uh, and conform to the Word of God. Uh, Brother Bill talking about preaching the Word. Uh, that's all we've got to preach. Amen. Uh, I'm not interested in ideals. Uh, I'm not interested in your thoughts. I'm interested uh, in what the Word of God says. Amen. Uh, and so when he gets to preaching the Word, uh, uh, you ought to back him up. You ought to encourage him. Uh, uh, don't get mad at him. Amen. Uh, and he's talking about those that have rule over you. Amen. You say, preacher, I don't like it. Why do you call a preacher? I mean, if you don't want him to preach to you, uh, uh, why did you call a preacher? Amen. Uh, I tell you what, we don't have we not we don't look for uh, 
a social club, amen, we're, uh, we're looking for a pastor, somebody uh, uh, that'll preach to us, and, and we don't need methods, amen, that, that's where we're at today, uh, uh, that we're pushing the preachers aside, uh, and we're coming up with a method. Uh, we've got a method for the children. We've got a method for the young people. We've got a method for this. And me- What's the matter with God's method? What, what's the matter with the Word of God? What's, what's the matter with teaching the Word of God? What's the matter with scriptures? We, uh, but we don't have the men uh, that we one time had. Amen. Uh, I tell you what, we don't need methods. Uh, we need men of God that will stand in that pulpit uh, and preach what thus saith the Lord uh, uh, because they care for for the souls of your children, amen. And so that's what we find here in the book of Hebrews, uh, uh, that he's encouraging them there uh, uh, to remember them that have rule uh, over you, amen. I, I, I've heard a lot of people say, well, we'd like to have us a preacher. Uh, well, they do till they get one. Uh, and then they say, well, I didn't want, really want one that bad, amen. Uh, I tell you what, that's where, <laughs> that's where we're living at when, when we get a talking about uh, one with the power of God on him, one that'll preach and uh, uh, pray, pray that God a man will uh, touch him and help him. Uh, I, I need a preacher to step on my toes. Uh, I need a preacher to plow my hat. Uh, I, we need preaching. Uh, hey, but don't get mad when you get one. Hey, Amen. Uh, uh, when he gets to preaching, when he gets to plowing your hat, when he gets stepping on your toes, don't, don't get mad at him. That, that's what you said you wanted. Amen. And so he said here in the scripture, he said, pray for them that have rule over you. And you need to pray for your pastor, amen? Pray for him that God will, uh, the power of God will be upon him. Pray uh, hearts will be tenderized uh, uh, through the word of God. That's the only way the heart is, uh, the heart is going to be tenderized uh, is preaching the word of God, amen? Uh, we're living in time of rebellion, uh, a uh, uh, rebellious heart, rebellious attitude. Uh, but if we'll preach the word of God, uh, uh, the Bible said it like a hammer, amen, uh, uh, that it'll crush that old heart, uh, that old stony heart. And you'll be saved by the good grace of God. Conforming to the word of God. Uh, God will do a work in your heart. Uh, uh, God will do a work in your family. God will do a work uh, uh, in your life for God's honor uh, and for God's glory, amen. Pray that they'll be saved. Pray for your wife. Pray, pray for his children that God will touch them. Notice what he said uh, in the latter part of that verse. He said, considering the end uh, of their conversation. Now, that conversation means manner of life. We need to consider how God's used Kurt, how God's used his family, how, uh, how God's blessed him as he's followed the Lord. I've heard the testimonies of all you here at Millersville Baptist Church. What an impact God's made upon his life. Uh, Hey, but rest assured, he's not perfect, amen. Uh, and when you start lifting the preacher up uh, and thinking he's perfect, you, you, you're badly mistaken, amen. Uh, I tell you what, a preacher, he, he got the same flesh uh, that you've got. He goes through the same troubles uh, and the same temptations and trials uh, uh, that you face in your life. Uh, and so don't lift him up on a pedestal. I understand uh, uh, the calling and the office. Uh, I understand that. Hey, but when you're holding him up, uh, I tell you what, expect no faults and failures. Uh, uh, you're going to get let down somewhere down the road uh, uh, because his family's not perfect. Uh, he's not perfect. Uh, hey, but we're serving one that is perfect. Amen. Uh, and so you need to pray for him. Uh, lift him up at God. Uh, uh, would use him. Amen. Uh, and may I say to you, God will honor the man. Uh, God doesn't honor the building. God honors the man uh, uh, that God is using. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of time, what I said a while ago, uh, a lot of methods being used uh, instead of the men of God are being used. Brother Bill talked about the old men of God in the days gone by. Uh, some of them couldn't even read the Bible, couldn't even read, read, read I mean, in boxcar letters, so to speak. People, I've, I've heard preachers that their wives uh, had to read the Word of God to them. But there's one thing about it, they had God on them. They had the touch of God on them, amen. Uh, and so, hey, that's what we need. Uh, we need to pray for them that at the touch of God to be upon him, that God would continue to use him there uh, uh, at Miller's, Miller, uh, Lenny's Grove Baptist Church. Uh, I realize the pastor's on the front lines. Uh, if the devil can get him, uh, if the devil can tire him down, uh, uh, he'll get to the flock. Amen. Uh, he's the shepherd. He's looking out uh, uh, for the souls of the people. Uh, and 
Amen. So the devil definitely uh, has him in the crosshairs. Uh, he had loved to take him down. Uh, he had loved to trip him up. Uh, it doesn't make any difference how he does it. Uh, uh, through temptation of uh, all the things that the world has to offer. Uh, I don't care how good looking or not. Uh, I tell you what, hey, anybody, uh, uh, the devil will use anybody uh, uh, to try to get to him uh, or try to get to her uh, uh, to ruin his ministry uh, and tear his ministry down. Uh, that's why you need to pray for him, amen. We're living day and time and a lot of men of God, a uh, whole lot better men than me or you or anybody else in here. I tell you what, it's on the side, on the side. They've been shelved. Uh, uh, they used to be, but they ain't no more. Uh, I tell you, you know what they've done? Uh, they've dropped their guard. Amen. Uh, that's why you need to pray for him, that God uh, would keep his hand upon him uh, and use him for God's honor and his glory. And so we find that, realize he's on the front lines. Uh, I tell you what, uh, uh, may, he, he might be considered uh, unimportant and unappreciated, uh, but God considers his, his labor very important. Brother Bill talked about 1 Peter 5 and 2. Uh, there he said, Feed the flock of God which among you, taking the oversight thereof. Not by constraint, but willingly, not with filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither of being lords over God heritage, but being example of the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. You might not think much about him being a pastor, but God does. God, God places his ministry uh, uh, that God's called him. God put it up on a high a shelf, a high honor, and he'll be rewarded for that ministry one day. And you need to be mindful of that. Uh, he needs to be mindful of that. Uh, it ain't your ministry. It ain't my ministry, but it's God's ministry. Amen. And we need to remember that. And pastor is concerned for you. Notice in verse 17. He said, Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourself. Notice what it said. For they watch for your souls. And they must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for it is improbable for you. And so the pastor to be concerned. He prays for your family. When you don't even pray for your family, he'll be praying for your family. When you're not even praying for your marriage, he's praying for your marriage. When you're not even concerned about your kids, he's concerned about your kids. He's praying for me. He, he's a labor, laboring in the Word of God. As he labors in the Word of God, huh, he has you on his mind. He has your children on his mind. Huh, as he watches you grow, as you watch you, you mature, he, he has you on his mind as he prays and seeks the face of God. And so we need to be concerned. He's concerned for you. He, 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 that's why he counsels you. That's why, that's why he challenges you. A lot of people say, say, you preaching to me? You think he's preaching to somebody in China? Definitely he's preaching to you, amen. When he gets in the pulpit, when Bill gets behind the pulpit, he's preaching to you, amen. That God's given him a message to preach you, to, to help you, to counsel you, and to, and to charge you, amen. He's trying to build that good relationship with you, church. Uh, he's not there to hurt you, uh, uh, but he's there to help you, uh, uh, he's looking down the road. Uh, where are you looking at here, not here and now? Uh, he's looking down in the future. Uh, he's looking for your children to mature. Uh, he's looking for when they get ready to get married. Uh, I tell you what, we need to prepare our children, uh, prepare our families uh, uh, for what's ahead for us. He's concerned for your family. He's concerned for your children. He wants to have that right relationship. He wants to see you grow and mature. It's amazing to me, and a lot, and a lot of people that blow up at the preacher and get, get blowed up, you know, they're immature. They're not too deep in the Word of God. I mean, you get a preaching on the home, you blow half the church out. You get a preaching on the role of a husband is to lead the family, and they'll swell up on you. Put your lips out. You get a preaching on the role of a woman, that she submit herself to her husband. That's God, he ain't running me down. Get that attitude, you know why? Because she's run the show so long that she don't want to give it up. Amen. I'm talking about he has concern. Amen. I, he wants to help you. I know some of you women ain't liking that, but you know I'm right. Amen. I tell you, I got some looks on that. Amen. But I'm telling you, that's the day and hour that we live in. The reason a lot of homes out of order is because the husband won't take the lead role in the home. Amen. 
Oh, hand them up and said, you take charge of your home, there'll be some blood. Probably your blood, amen. That's right. But there have been time that we need to get a home right. Get a home right, it sure is in the day that we live. Bible says, though, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 12, and we beseech you, brethren, to know them that which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love, their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. And so he's not there to hurt you, church, but he's there to help you. And let me go in here just while I'm here. And, and there's a lot of things you go, well, we've done it this way. Well, that don't mean you're going to continue to do it. You got a preacher, you got a pastor that's going to lead you now. And just because you've done it for 99 years, don't mean you're going to do it for 99 more years. You got a pastor, you said you want a pastor to lead you. And, and, if he, and as God leads him, he'll lead you. And as he leads you, just because you've done it 99 years in a row, doesn't mean you're going to do it 99 more years. I mean, if God leads him a different direction, uh, you ought to be ready to submit to the man of God uh, as he follows the Lord, uh, as you need to follow him, amen. And don't get mad when he starts changing things. If God shows him something to change, uh, let God use him there. I mean, at one church, and he, I'm over here in the fellowship hall, let me show these preachers. I may have lined up around the wall. They had a problem. How long you been here? 26 years. Amen. So I had order, brother. I tell you what, you got both sides of the fellowship lined up preacher. There's something wrong, amen. I tell you what, when you want a preacher, when you want a pastor, I tell you what, you need a pastor that'll lead you, that cares for you, and that loves for you, and loves for your children. You ought to get behind him in the day that we live and say, thank God we're going to pray for the pastor, amen. Pray for him. Oh, that critic, critical and, and, and rebellious spirit, I'm telling you what, it, it'll cause grief. It'll cause grief to the pastor. It'll cause grief to the, to the church. You know why? Because you're unteachable. A lot of churches, the reason they won't grow, uh, uh, re, reason they're stagnant and stale, is because a lot of times people's unteachable. They've done it this way for so many years. Uh, but when you take the Word of God and, and start applying the Word of God and, and you have problems conforming to the Word of God, that's where we're at today. Yeah. And a lot of people are unteachable. They, they, they got a rebellious streak in them, but you got a man of God that's trying to help you along the way. And so there's a lot of unteachables. You make a mess out of things. You make a mess out of your life. If you won't follow a pastor, if you won't follow the preacher that God's given you, you can rest assured you're going to have a mess in your life. Your children will be in a mess. You'll be in a mess. And your grandchildren will be in a mess. Amen. When you get away from the teaching of the Word of God, you're headed in the wrong direction, and you will have a mess. A lot of grandmas and grandpas uh, that's having to raise their grandchildren uh, uh, because the daughter or the, uh, or, or the son uh, has messed their life up. We've got away from the Lord. I'm not throwing around. I know nothing about you people. But I'm telling you what, we're in a mess today uh, because we've got away from the teaching of the Word of God. And so you want a pastor, you need, you need to have somebody to pray for you and help you and have a teachable spirit. Conform to the Word of God. If not, you're going to make a mess out of it. I can take you to family after family today. Uh, that's rebelled. I, I can take you to a family right now that's that rebelled. He's a deacon in the church. They come out in my car, the bags is hanging on the mirrors. I mean, the books and everything. This left, went out. Said I got preaching on sin too much. Come find out he's running around. Come find out his home busted up. Come find out his family is busted up, separated. Come find out his children's in a mess. His, his boys have got children out of wedlock. His wife's married somebody. He's married somebody. He's doing tattoos in a building now. I'm with a deacon in the church. Now his boy's up for murder. Hey, you're not on a picnic. We're in a war. Hey, playtime's over with. It's time to do business with God. It's time to get our hearts right with God. But we wind up in a mess because we get away from the teaching of the Word of God. Amen. Bible says, though, when Solomon said in Proverbs 5 and 11, listen, it's real good. 
He said, and thou mourn at last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. He said, and say, have I hated instruction? And my heart despised reproof and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers nor inclined my ear to the instru that instructed me. What was he saying? He said, because I rejected the teaching and the preaching of the word of God, he said, I've wound up my life is in a mess. Amen. I, I tell you what, you look back on your life and you'll find a mess where you got away from God. You look at your children, look at your grandchildren. I tell you what, the reason we're in a mess today in America, and it's all because we got away from the teaching of the Word of God. We're reaping exactly what we said. So, and the pastor's concerned about you. He's concerned about you. He's concerned about your marriage. He's concerned about your children. And notice what he said there in verse 24. He said, salute all them that have rule over you. When you come in the house of God, you go, yes, sir. That ain't what it means. <laughs> that ain't what it means. It means to greet. It means to wish well. It means to receive joyfully. It means to welcome them into your life. It means to pray for them, and it means to take care of them. You'll take care of the man of God. Amen. You'll look after him. You'll take, take care of him. Don't go by and say, Preacher, well, if you need anything now, you let me know. Well, he's a real man of God. He ain't going to let you know nothing. If God lays something on your heart, you'll do it for him. Amen. Take care of him. You'll not have to come tell you something. You'll take care of the man of God. Look after him. Amen. The Bible says he's worth double honor. Take care of him. I've looked at the church every time. Every time church done for me, took care of me, the board always went up. Amen. Don't need anything. Thank God I've never asked them for anything. They've always took care of me. You'll take care of the man of God. Amen. Look after him. Take care of him. And then I want you, I want you, to, I want you to remember one thing. Remember his wife. Why don't you look up here, ladies. Don't be trying to go to his wife to get to the husband. I've seen that bunch of junk in the churches time and time again. That, that there's a little group, there's a little clique. They say, well, we can get to him if we go to his wife. You better cut that off real quick. There'll be a little group of hens want to run around down there. They'll get to his wife, try to get the preacher. Amen. Amen. That's what happens. He'll ruin the church. He'll tear the church down, but you need to pray for his wife. I look back on my wife, and I wish she could be here today. And I didn't come in here to preach to get applause either. I'm just coming here to preach facts. I tell you, you're thinking about your wife, my wife. I watched my wife stand in the background many a time. She stood there. She'd been alone. When I was with people at church, my wife laying there in the bed alone by herself. At the hospitals and other, other situations. Up there working on the church and around the church. My wife laying there alone. She gave up a lot. And I look back on it, she gave up a lot more. A lot more. I shouldn't have, I should have done more, Brother Bill. Should have spent more time with her than I did with the church. They watched she laid there by herself. And, and I watched that disease for seven years. I watched that disease take my wife. And I watched her little body. I watched her little body go downhill. And I watched the church. I watched them call me. But I never seen them call my wife. Don't look at me like that. I'm telling you, church, you say you love the preacher. I'm telling you what, you may love him. But you better love his wife. Amen. I tell you what, I wish I could go back and change some things. I'd do it. I tell you what, they'd call me. How you doing, preacher? How's it going, preacher? Well, I'd like to say, why don't you call my wife and ask her how it's going? I tell you what, sometimes they would, they, I'd, give, I'd say, you want to talk to my wife? My wife couldn't talk. The, the, the disease had, had, had took her, took her. Well, she could say a few things every now and then. But she'd get that phone and, and she'd hold it to her head and, and they'd talk to her. And my wife was grinning. And she, had, she always had a smile about her. 
And even though she couldn't say anything back, they have the joy to hear somebody on the other line, on the other end of that line, and knowing that, that somebody cared for her. Amen. I tell you what, a lot of times she was, uh, she was looked at because she couldn't do what everybody else could do. She couldn't function like everybody else. And a lot of times she was left out. A lot of times uh, she was put to the side. A lot of times uh, she was just looked at. I tell you what, don't forget his wife. You don't never know what you're going to face. You don't know what she's going to have to go through. But a pastor's wife, I believe, is going to get more rewards than most pastors will ever think about getting for all they went through, all they've had to face, all they've had to put up with. Oh, thank God for my wife. Don't forget about his wife, church. Put much emphasis on his wife. Call her when she's sick. Get concerned about her. A lot of times, how you doing, preacher? I, I heard that so many times, I was sick of it about her. How you doing? What about her? What about her? Don't forget his wife. I'm preaching. I'm preaching because I know what I'm talking about. I've seen it happen. Baptists are some of the cruelest, vicious, meanest people that you'll ever meet in your life. Don't forget his wife. He'll be a help to the church. When you get that balance, there'll be stability in the church. When you get that balance, there'll be strength in the church. There'll be growth in people's lives and you'll spend many years together. Know what you're looking for? A relationship for many years. The Bible says, salute them that have rule over you. That means to welcome. Welcome him into your life. Welcome him into your family because he's concerned for your soul souls of your children. Brother Billy. Brother Jeff Gregory.
I'd say a couple things before we pray. Ronnie, I didn't ever, had never met your wife when I went to that funeral. But I've never been to a funeral like that in my life. And uh, I told Brother Chad over at the graveside, there's one thing that runs in the family, and that's preaching. I believe Lenny Grover's got a uh, top round draft pick. Brother Kirk, we love you. We appreciate you. And I'm glad I passed cross and got to know you and met you. Praying for you, trying to pray for you every day. Let's pray, would you? Our Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house for this great occasion, Lord God. We, we want your power and your presence to be upon this ministry, upon this, this, uh, this man of God that you've called out. Lord, I, I appreciate him coming by, that we got a chance to know him here at Millersville. Lord, we miss him, Lord, already we've missed him terribly. Lord, pray, God, you'd help him, you'd put your hand on him, continue to pour out your power on him, and, Lord, you'd give him souls for his labor. God, help us to pray for him daily. Lord, help us to lift him up. I, I pray this church would lift him up. I pray they'd get behind him and heed the message that you've called him to preach. Lord, God, we thank you that you're still calling men of God. We're glad that you're still anointing men to preach, and, and God, you've given them the opportunity you give this privilege, this opportunity to share the gospel. Give him souls for his labor. God, put your hand on this congregation. And, and God, grow it and fill it with the power of God. Lord, I pray Lenny's Grove would grow like it's never grown before. That souls would be saved. Lord, men, women, boys and girls would get on fire for God and pray. And seek the face of God. Find the help and the hope they need in this hour for God. There's no other place to turn. There's nowhere else to go. But to you, Lord, we've nothing else to look to. God, when not looking to the government. We're not looking to anything, looking to you. Lord, we're depending on you, trusting in you, leaning on you. God, put your hand on him. I pray in his ministry. And Megan, I pray you'd help her bless her during this special time. God, you know uh, uh, what it is, Lord, and you know what they need. God, I pray you'd just pull up close to them, Lord. Pull them up to you, Lord, and love on them, God. Tell them how I'm sure how much you love them, God. Thank you, God, for where you brought us from, Lord. I thank you, God, for this good time. And Lord God, I pray, uh, Lord, that message that the pastor preached the other Wednesday night, it's been on my heart, Lord, it's been on my mind tonight, today, uh, during this service, Lord, the relationship. Lord, you, you, you talked to the pastor about talking to Kurt about that relationship between you and him. And Lord, I, I remember the other week when we was in here in the service and the power of God a-moving, and Lord, when we... Get alone sometimes with somebody special. We'll say this between me and you. Well, Lord, I, I want Kurt to just get between, just between you and him, Lord. And you keep that relationship between you and him where it needs to be, Lord. For I, I believe, Lord God, old Joshua got where he needed to get, Lord, in chapter 5, so that he could face the, the walls could come down in chapter 6. Is that relationship with you and God. Lord, if we'll keep that relationship between me and you, Lord. I believe everything will take care of itself. God, you'll take care of the rest. we just depending on you. Pray and put your hand on this family, on this congregation. Bless Millersville. God, help us, Lord. we got to have your help every day, Lord, just between me and you. There's nothing else but you, Lord. I thank you and I praise you. I pray, God, you'd help my family and my home. God, you know what I need. You know what my family needs and what I need in my life. Lord, you help us, I pray, in this hour, Lord, to go out of this place. Lord, be able to win the lost in these last days. We have no other place to go. I want to tell you how much we love you, and we thank you for this privilege and this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. I say glory. Glory, glory, glory. Well, you can be sure of this. Hell has been alerted. There's a man of God over there at God's house in Lenny's Grove. Amen. Put your armor on. Dress for the battle. We certainly appreciate you being here today. And Brother Kurt and his family, we'd like to invite you for a time of fellowship as we adjourn the service today. Uh, our fellowship hall, go out these back doors and turn to your right. You'll come to a wrought iron railing. Just go down those steps. Uh, our ladies have prepared, and uh, we're looking for all of you to say, so don't go nowhere else. 
but downstairs, all right? All right, so let's stand this afternoon. Our hearts have been challenged. And when we get downstairs, let, uh, let's let uh, Brother Kurt, his wife, his family, uh, let's let them go to the front of the line. And uh, then, the let, then the folks at uh, Lenny's Grove, you fall in behind them. Uh, you are our guest today. Even though you're our brothers and sisters, you are our guest today. And it's a privilege to have you. Amen. So you are at liberty to go. God bless you.